Hey guys, what is up? John here from flyatmikealpha.com. So good to see all of your smiling faces. Can't actually see any of your faces. That's how this camera thing works. You guys all just look like a camera to me. That's totally fine though. Either way, today the topic is static thrust. And well, what is static thrust and why are we even talking about it? Static thrust is basically how much thrust you get out of your plane, how much pulling force you get when you go full power with the brakes on right before you release the brakes to take off. How much pulling force is that engine and propeller generating? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So this whole thing came up because I flew my little Cessna 140, 85 horsepower, 1947 airplane from Florida up to Michigan in August. Now, previously I had flown it from Michigan down to Florida in late May, roughly similar temperatures, roughly similar conditions, you know, maybe five degrees difference, maybe 10 at the most, probably not even that, very similar conditions. One key difference was the airplane going down to Florida had six by six tires, you know, so fairly small tires on it. And the airplane coming back from Florida up to Michigan has 26 inch bush wheels on it. So a little bit bigger tires. Now, wasn't really impressed on the way up. It was pretty much at gross weight or just under both ways going down and back. Going down, I got up to 11,500 feet with the help of some thermals and some cumulus activity going on. Um, but yeah, I got up to 11,500 with that little 85 horse engine, you know, firewalled all the way there. And leaving Florida, you know, I had some really hard times taking off of, you know, three, four, 5,000 foot long runways, burning up a lot of runway, just breaking ground in Georgia and stuff. It was hot and I get that. I mean, it makes a big difference. But then on the way up here, I still was having a hard time ever breaking through 9,000 feet. It was really stuck around 8,000, 8,500 feet and, you know, similar weight, similar temperatures, similar conditions, fairly fresh top overhaul on that airplane for pretty new cylinders. So it should be making good power. Static RPM was acceptable according to the type certificate data sheet, TCDS, something we talked about in a whole other video beyond the scope of this one, but everything's kind of in spec, but I wanted to get a baseline at least for how much power this airplane's putting out. And if there's anything going on that maybe I could change real quick, that would help it. So tested a couple different ways. What we did is we got this hanging scale to go ahead and measure how much static thrust this airplane is putting out. We did it a couple different ways, right? So I wanted to see if the air filter was having an effect on it. And this whole rumor about, you know, with a spinner, without a spinner, what makes more power, you know, is it worth it to have the spinner or skull cap on there? Spinner and skull cap are kind of interchangeable in these little tiny, you know, cubs and uh, older Cessnas with those tiny little spinners on there. Um, uh, so we went ahead and tested the first way around was a full power static thrust test with the air filter on and the skull cap, the spinner removed. And here's the result. So next up was to go ahead and test this thing with the air filter still on, put the skull cap back on or spinner back onto the propeller and see if that changed our thrust at all. Next is go ahead and remove the air filter because these bracket air filters, although they're very cheap, these foam air filters, super cheap, like 10 bucks each, easy to replace. You know, there's been a lot of talk about the paper air filters breathe better, they don't gum up, they don't restrict airflow, they allow the engine to breathe and really make more power. So we just went ahead and removed the filter element from it. The airplane's you know, on the ground, it's pretty uh, pretty clean ground, not a lot of stuff flying around, so should be fine to run the engine for a little bit without the air filter. Happens anytime when you're running car heat anyways. So we went ahead and did that with the spinner on and with the air filter removed. And then one more time, just to dispel any myths here, we went ahead and removed the spinner, removed the skull cap once more to go ahead and get an accurate test for what's actually going on with or without that spinner on there. Okay, so conclusion. Well, 
I mean, the air filter being removed definitely helps. The engine's breathing better, so maybe we'll try to scrounge up a paper air filter somewhere, swap that on there, and see if we can actually maintain a little bit higher thrust, uh, a little bit more power with that paper air filter over the foam one. Definitely something was happening there. As far as the spinner or the skull cap being removed, um, maybe. I mean, there are some guys I know that swear by running in stole competitions and swear by running around with their cubs with no skull cap, no spinner. They say it gives them more power. It's just not worth it to have it on there. And maybe they're right. You know, there's definitely, you know, both times it was slightly higher, just ever so slightly higher with the skull cap off. Now, how that changes in flight, you know, actually once you get some airflow through the propeller, have no idea, but you know, if all you care about is static thrust and takeoff performance and climb performance, then maybe it does help. So definitely worth some more testing there to kind of find some stuff out. As far as, you know, where this little 140 is sitting, well, it's making more than 300 pounds of thrust, static thrust. So I think the airplane's actually in pretty good shape. We could, uh, we're probably gonna take a look at the carburetor and make sure the mixture's just right on it and take a look at the mags, make sure they're timed right because that could all affect power on the engine. But overall, you know, static RPM's correct. Static thrust seems pretty good. I think this, you know, 72, 73 year old airplane is just, you know, not quite as efficiently designed as some of the newer ones out there. And maybe that's why I'm just kind of not getting the performance I was really hoping for out of it. I mean, 85 horsepower is not a whole heck of a lot. But, you know, seeing 300 pounds of stack thrust is pretty darn good. Uh, out of an 85 horse engine. Now, if anyone else out there has a Cessna 120, 140, or even just a Champ or any other 85 horsepower C85 engine out there, and you've done some static thrust tests on your airplane, I'd love to hear what you got, what your prop is. This is a 7148 prop on this C85, and I'd love to hear it just for comparison. Leave it in the comments below. Let us know, because um, there's not a whole lot of data out there on static thrust tests, but either way, the airplane seems pretty good right now. You know, it's just a not an airplane to be taken in and out of a 2,000 foot long grass strip at gross weight, you know, in the summertime anyways. It's definitely an airplane for longer runways until it cools off out, and then hopefully that'll help it perform a little bit better, maybe take some fuel and some weight off of it too. Either way, hopefully you guys learned something out of this video, and if you guys do have a C85 out there, by all means, do the test yourself, let us know. We'll be posting up some more numbers and some more videos here over the next few months of well, different airplanes, we'll call it. Not giving anything away, not saying that we're building an experimental airplane right now, but, you know, we might be doing something where we can do a lot of different testing and hopefully learn some things ourselves and share that with you guys here on this channel. So, you know, stay tuned, subscribe if you guys have not already, hit that little bell so you get notified when we post cool new videos here on the channel. And by all means, if you haven't already, Check out flyatmikealpha.com and all the awesome online courses there. Private, instrument, commercial, pilot, ground schools, boot camps to get you ready for your check ride, tailwheel courses, seaplane courses, all that sort of stuff online at flyatmikealpha.com. And, and guys, if you can't fly every day, then just flyatmikealpha.com. We will see you in the next one.